Hi, my name is Natalie Kramer Anderson and I am a whitewater kayaker. I've been racing and engaging in whitewater kayaking competitions for the last 20 years or so. Last year I was invited to uh, give a speech at a women's happy hour event in Seattle um, to talk about racing and why I race. Uh, the numbers of women racing haven't really changed much in 20 years and it can be hard to decide to race when it is maybe turning something fun and into something really stressful and I'm hopefully my words here will um, help anyone who's thinking about racing navigate that. So. Here goes my, I'll call it a sermon, a whitewater sermon, and I'm quite proud of it and happy to share it with you. Here it goes. My biggest learning opportunities for growth as a human have occurred when I have placed myself in difficult situations outside of my comfort zones, and I have worked hard to make these arenas become more familiar and more comfortable. In this process, I have gained the skills to inhabit the uncomfortable spaces without being as stressed, and thus, I, as I have grown older, I have increased my ability to handle more gracefully and calmly. Although there's plenty of situations where I'm still not graceful or calm. I have found that racing to be an incredible tool precisely because it puts me in a challenging and stressful environment outside of my comfort zone without increasing the risk posed from the whitewater itself. Trying to paddle the fastest I can places me at my ability limit where the greatest skill development can occur. No matter how good I am, I can always work to become faster and more efficient, even on the easiest runs. I have learned that in my past, a lot of my anxiety around racing has stemmed from a deep fear of disappointing others. I have had a strong desire to be accepted, and so my performance was tied up into concepts of self-worth in relation to others. This came out in how I couldn't seem to avoid comparing myself to others, like all the time. Once I released myself from the need to be accepted by others and took ownership of my own performance, I was able to more singularly focus on the process of learning. I started having a lot more fun paying attention to nuance and practice, and I quickly got a lot better. Results followed, and I was better able to celebrate and cheer on my fellow competitors. Acceptance came from recognition of others and my own effort, not from any sort of results. Competition can be emotionally difficult and in my past was downright painful at times. But I have learned that competition is also a gift because the environment of competition is a stage on which all of my inner demons and insecurities prance about under full lights. Through competition, I have been able to fully experience my internal saboteurs of impossibility thinking and negative self-talk that actually play out in all areas of my life, not just my kayaking, which limit me from reaching my potential as a human being over and over again. Over time, through observation, and by fostering a curious and open mind, I have been able to improve my mental resilience and have now got to the point where I can, most of the time, simply enjoy the process of racing, no matter the result or who is there. So I wanna to pass to you a few of my life lessons I have learned from racing, and may they help you in your own journey. Number one, Expect that it is possible, not that you will. It is important that you can see the possibility of success and that you have the potential to meet the challenge, but not that you will. This makes you more open to failure because even when you fail, you know that it is still possible to also succeed. This gives you the motivation to keep trying, keep working, keep learning. The failures then become learning opportunities gifted to you by the world. 
Number two, you get what you give. Focus on what you have to give to the effort rather than the difficulty of the challenge. The more effort you give, the more you will receive. When you're able to fully commit yourself to a challenge, you do release your mind from doubt and this enables your body to perform. In the words of Arno Ilgner in the book, A Rock Warrior's Way, he says, until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back and always ineffectiveness. When you recognize that you get what you give, poor results are easily identified as not a failing of you as a person, but a failing of your commitment to preparation, which can be easily accepted and rectified in the future, if desired. Number three, ditch responsibility avoidant self-talk, such as excuses, denial, judgment, pretense, and justification. It limits your power as an individual, and when you do use it, it is a sign that there's a mental inefficiency you need to work out. A good example of this is in my past races when I would miss a finish line, and I'd kind of blame maybe the race organizers for not clearly showing me where it was. <clears throat> we do lie to ourselves and engage in impossibility thinking to shrink our worlds to make it feel safer but we cannot act effectively upon a lie. There is no true learning to be had, only avoidance of the biggest opportunities for gain. Ditch achievement, oh, number four. Ditch achievement orientations. Race, not for the outcome, but because you enjoy the process of learning and getting better and interacting with others. Pay attention to your inner dialogue. If you are berating yourself or frustrated, this is a sure sign that you have not ditched achievement orientations. Frustration is a sign that you are expecting the challenge to come down to your level and is out of alignment with your goals. Are you wanting a quick win to boost your confidence? Or are you wanting a challenging learning environment, learning experience? When you expect to be challenged and learn, it is hard to be frustrated because when you start failing, you actually see it as a good sign that you are being challenged. This can be met with open curiosity about how to improve and to overcome that challenge. I feel that many women sometimes feel pressured to participate in racing as a woman to advance the cause by increasing the number of women out there racing. And I would like to point out that this is an achievement orientation. And I'd say ditch it. Racing to achieve an outcome goal of number of women racers is counterproductive. Participating in a race solely to be supportive of other women is not a mindset that is supportive of you as an individual or women in general because it focuses on what others are expecting or wanting from you and fosters feelings of obligation. When action is motivated by a sense of obligation rather than internal desire, resentment and disappointment are sure to follow. Race because you enjoy having a fun time interacting, supporting and feeling supported by other women, not because you feel obligated to be there for others or for a cause or movement. The best way to support other women is by overcoming your own internal saboteurs and fully showing up for yourself in whatever way that is. I see competition with each other as a collaboration, an opportunity to fully share ourselves, do our best, and in doing so, inspire and better ourselves in community. Thank you, that's all.